Hey traders, back in the saddle, checking in on the stock market today. Lots to be looking at. We had a complete 180 degree day today with every emotional spectrum out there. I'll show you a couple trades that I took, one winner, one loser, and we'll look at where we stand bigger picture. Is the sky about to fall? I'll tell you. <clears throat> so long story short, we dumped on the morning and held weak for a good bit through the morning and then a V-shaped bounce with significant strength into the close. So bigger picture, we have a number of uptrend lines that we can be keeping an eye on. And again, the uptrend lines are just visual guides for me because you can always tweak those lines just a little bit and significantly change things. So you can be looking at them as visual guides and targets to begin scouting entries, but they themselves alone are not enough for me to be confident. So if, for example, we test an uptrend support line and the four hour RSI is at some recent historical bounce levels, then that's two different signals giving me information. So it's the trend lines in addition to additional information. But as far as the S&P 500 on the daily time frame, we're looking at an uptrend line, something along these lines. You can see we've hit it one, two, three, four, five, and this would be the sixth distinct touch of this line. And we know the S&P 500 is still just fine, bigger picture, because we're still in a weekly uptrend. And we need to differ differentiate different kinds of fear. Sky is falling fear is when everything is dropping at the lows at the same time. And that was, of course, during COVID. That's during some of these big drops down, even, even the short-term Fed minutes reaction or the FOMC reaction can see that happen for the last two hours in the trading day. So that sky is falling fear when everything's dropping. But the current drop that we're seeing, there's still significant rotation going on. QQQ is seeing notable weakness over the last week plus, but the financial sector hit all-time highs. So if one of our most important sectors is hitting all-time highs, we know rotation is going on. The energy sector was at many month highs. The utility sector, which is generally defensive, is still in a daily uptrend. So we're not having market-wide fear. In my opinion, we're seeing a response to what the Fed, the anticipation of what the Fed's going to be doing in 2022, and that leading to big-time rotation going on. And ever since our COVID lows two years ago, or whenever that was, two years maybe, something like that, ever since then, it's been QQQ semiconductors and initially growth. They were all leading the way to the upside. They were our lead bulls. Growth has fallen off significantly over the last six plus months, but we're in an environment where if you're focusing, you know, it depends on what your watch list is. If your watch list is 80% tech and semiconductors, a day like today or a week like this past week, it's going to seem like the sky is falling, but you have to have the bigger picture look of things. And whether you're doing that through heat maps or just watching all these different ETFs, again, there's a number of sectors that have had me saying, okay, yes, we're weak, but we're still very strong in some of these names. And it's just rotation going on right now. So there has been a notable shift from our bounce leaders from the COVID lows, tech, semiconductors growth, and it's now shifting into the laggards, which were energy and financial sector who are now the leaders. So it's a bit of uh, a miss, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it can be misleading essentially, depending on what your watch list is made up of. But SPY right here on the daily, anything above 451.14 is a higher low. Look at the weekly time frame. We're keeping weekly higher lows going. So if that changes, it'll be notable to us, but at this point in time, it's remaining intact. The hourly had a V-shaped bounce, but we know we need hourly trend changes. And what we see tomorrow as far as where we open is going to significantly dictate the direction I'm looking tomorrow morning. If we open higher, we're looking bearish for hourly consolidation, knowing we have not changed the hourly trend yet. If we open lower, we're scouting a higher low for the bulls to shape up that hourly trend change. So an open lower, I scout an hourly higher low and I scout bullish. A higher open, I scout bearish for the hourly consolidation. And this kind of setup presents itself very often and again, I, I'm not doing much planning tonight. All my planning will be tomorrow morning as I will then know how are we going to be opening. So if the bulls confirm the hourly trend change, and this is the case for SPY and a ton of individual names and a ton of individual sectors, if we confirm the hourly trend change, we zoom out with a lot of space for a daily lower high to form. Anything under 480, the all-time high, is a daily lower high. If we confirm a daily downtrend, so say we bounce and confirm a daily downtrend, that will be very notable to me. 
and will be then at risk of losing the weekly higher lows. The NASDAQ has been weaker. I'm watching this downtrending support line that has four distinct touches. And I am also watching a bigger picture uptrend line, which has a whole bunch of touches as well. So here's another one where we've got one, two, three, four, five, and this would be number six if it holds. That being said, we must make note that we just confirmed a weekly downtrend for the first time since the COVID lows. Anything that's happening for the first time since the COVID lows is definitely something we need to be paying attention to. We've lost weekly supports before, but we have not confirmed the lower high and lower low. And we did just do that. The best case for the bulls, of course, is that that lower high and lower low sees no follow through. And it's just another monthly high or low to keep the party raging. That's possible, but it's certainly a note. We're, we're making note of that mentally and on a piece of paper. The NASDAQ just confirmed a weekly downtrend for the first time since the COVID lows. And that means we need to be a bit cautious. Hourly, big time bounce, trend change needed. Same thing, open higher, scout the hourly consolidation, open lower, scout the hourly higher low. That's my game plan as a day trader, not telling you what to do. And then we scout a daily lower high to be the result of that bounce. We watch the retracement size. Is it a 25% retracement and a bear flag? Is it a 50% retracement creating space for a higher low? That is something we're going to be significantly focusing on as well. Another thing I'm significantly focusing on is with this drop over this past week, we've seen XLF do nothing but go up. They have been fairly inverse. I'm watching to see if that remains the case. Can XLF confirm an hourly downtrend? Does it confirm an hourly downtrend while QQQ confirms an hourly uptrend? Does XLF pull back while QQQ goes up? Do they switch off and take turns? I don't know yet. That's something I'm observing on a daily basis. But for now, the financial sector is still holding on very strong. And today was the second highest close in history. So again, how weak can the market be if one of our major top three sectors is seeing its second highest close in the history of forever. Semiconductors, 288.14 support broke, but not a whole lot of follow through. And we have a four hour downtrending support line I've been watching on NVDA, taking off extended hours just to smooth this out a little bit. Don't really love the support line here. I like it better on NVDA, I'll show you in just a second, but like everybody else, nice bounce, hourly trend change needed. If we confirm an hourly trend change, we zoom out, we scout a daily lower high, anything under 318.69. But bigger picture, look at how much space the monthly time frame has to remain healthy. A lot. Look at NVDA. Monthly consolidation has started, but we could drop another 20% and be at monthly EMA 12. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Big picture trends. So NVDA, just to show you what I'm talking about, four hour time frame regular trading hours to just condense it a little bit. And this is the downtrending support line that we were watching initially. We were watching it back here and here we are touching it again. And we never changed the daily trend since all time highs. We had a big bounce here, but we never set a higher low and higher high. Bulls must confirm trend changes to shift momentum back in their favor, which is why this hourly trend change is really important tomorrow for all bulls that bounced if they're gonna prove bounce follow through. Tesla, Scouting a weekly higher low, anything above 688, make that 886. So all time high, low of the pullback, pretty much a double top. We've got a few tops here at 1200, definitely keeping a close eye on those, but the bulls are scouting the weekly higher low compared to 886. We need a daily trend change back to the bulls to have confidence that a weekly higher low is set. But before that, we need an hourly trend change back to the bulls for bounce confidence on the daily but a significant bounce off the lows today, and it is still a monthly potential bull flag as long as that 886 level holds. That's the most important level for me because if that breaks, we then lose a key support level and it will no longer be a monthly bull flag for me. And the monthly EMA 12 support, which has been holding for years, will then be at risk. Healthcare, I've been watching to see, you know, we have QQQ team bear, XLF team bull, which side is XLB going to be on? Last week, it was on Team Bear, but it is still a weekly uptrend. So there's no major red flags here as long as we form a weekly higher low compared to 128.35. And that's something that I'm keeping a close eye on. And if we just set another weekly higher low and the bulls keep control, then they're going to be on Team Bull. And that's obviously going to help the broader market. Hourly trend change back to bulls still needed. Like a lot of names, look at that volume pouring in at the end of the day. If we change the hourly trend to the bulls, there's a lot of space for a daily lower high 
what is the bounce retracement size to help us gauge what is the most likely scenario. Right now, the bounce retracement is about 30%. Bulls definitely need more. We need an hourly trend change and we need 50% plus if we're gonna be looking for that weekly high or low to be established. Financial sector, tons of space for a daily high or low to form. If we see first hourly oversold conditions, it will be a back burner trade. Anything above 38.97 will be a higher low. But as of right now, notable pullback, notable bounce. Have to break the low of today for an hourly downtrend to confirm. Energy has been just as strong. Correlation to the financial sector. And again, the energy sector hitting the highest levels in a long time. We haven't been up at these levels in over three years. So daily time frame, high or low each day, the last six days, we are watching, can the bears confirm an hourly downtrend? Is it time for tech and semiconductors to bounce and these other names to consolidate? Have to break 6035 for that to be the case. A lot of space for a daily higher low to form next time we do consolidate. IWM, double bottom, 208.76. We actually held it by over a percent. So I'd call it a higher low. Hourly trend change to the bulls is still needed. If we get it, we scout a daily lower high. Anything under 227.13, we got a triple top of resistance up in these 220s, the mid 220s. And it is a battle for a weekly high or low attempt. So we got our all time high. We've got our low of the drop, lower high, and we're attempting that higher low. But again, a lot of proving is still needed. Got a hawk attempting to make an attack. Timeout. He didn't get anything, but he came close. So IWM is scouting a weekly higher low. Again, one time frame at a time. Play the zoom out game. We need the hourly trend change. We need the daily trend change if we're going to have confidence in a weekly higher low. Cannabis space getting some attention today. TLRY had earnings and it had a bit of a mini short squeeze, 20% plus on the day, but definitely some notable consolidation off of that high. And we would need to confirm an hourly trend change if there were going to be sustained pressure on shorts. But we did pull back over 10% from that high of the day. So definitely not a whole lot of follow through at this point, but still keeping an eye on the sector. MSOS trying to form a little bit of a base of support. We have a bunch of names that already have a base of support, TCNNF in the 23s. So they're playing a little bit of defense. The question is, can they go on offense? So not falling asleep on the sector, but a whole lot of proving for the bulls to do as earnings roll around. Keep speaking of which, financial sector earnings start Friday and roll into next week. Netflix earnings are next week. I traded Netflix today. Why did I trade Netflix bullish? We were crushed. But more importantly, historical RSI levels. Go back on the daily RSI and look at what happens when you hit 20. Go back to the four hour, four hour RSI and look at what happens when you hit 16. I'm not going to do it because I already did it on live streams, but pretty much over the last 10 years, you bounce from these levels and they aligned. Sometimes I just went back and I looked at the daily and I could say, okay, the daily bounced from this level the last three times it has hit in this range in the last seven years. And then I look at the four hour. Okay, the four hour has bounced from this range. Yes, it did drop lower one time down to 11 RSI, but generally speaking, it bounces in this range over the last however many years. That's enough for me to scout a bounce. So I did, and I made an entry at 531.20, and it was a bit early because I was looking for a 15 minute higher low here and we dropped to a new low of the day. It was just an initial scale in entry. I would have entered more tomorrow if we didn't bounce, didn't cool off four hour RSI and closed weaker, but I am now in a Netflix swing position and I am looking to exit on a daily lower high. I'm gonna be watching the four hour EMA 12, keeping in mind my reasoning for being in the trade is diminishing because the four hour RSI has cooled off. I have to see the bulls confirm the hourly trend change for bounce follow through tomorrow and then I'll be scouting a daily lower high. Earnings were also a factor, knowing that the bears had big time gains in the last week of trading, looking for some of them to cover pre-earnings. I will be scouting, let's see, I'd love to sell a 560. That would be a very solid win for me. But an hourly trend change is step number one, and then we will just be scouting a daily lower high. D 
DXY, sideways, nothing going on until one of these ranges breaks. But I'm interested in the metals here, scouting these weekly higher lows. We've been following this for the past couple of weeks. I'm not confident yet in looking for an entry. I want to see dollar weakness. And then if we see dollar weakness, I'll use this level. Rather than using the, the weekly level that is all the way down, let's just use GLD, which is what I'll be trading. So rather than using a stop of 163.80, I want to wait for a higher low here. And I don't care about nailing the bottom. I just want bull momentum at my back. I want to be green on this trade real quick. So I want bulls to prove to me some strength and I want dollar weakness. And then I'll use 166.86 as my stop, which is going to save me multiple percent of risk, 2% of risk. So if bulls can prove a little bit more, I'll make an entry and use that level as a stop, knowing the bulls must confirm the weekly trend change for any kind of bigger picture shift to take place. And silver is the same. We're scouting a weekly higher low and the bulls have proving to do for that to be set. GDX, big time bounce today, hourly trend change needed, scouting a weekly higher low. Natural gas, we're scouting the monthly higher low, and the bulls are negating a weekly bear flag. So a bit more bounce follow through. Daily chart was puttering around, but a nice bull break. We're now watching the four hour uptrend to see if the bulls can follow through further. And we will then be scouting a monthly lower high, but this big monthly pullback, bigger picture, has us scouting a monthly higher low. Eventually, we'll need a weekly trend change wherever we top out. Then we have to hold the low and confirm that trend change for monthly higher low bounce follow through. Hope you had a good day out there today. I did make one failed trade. NIO tried to play the bounce early this morning, and I was playing the inside bar, and I was playing off that support, but stopped out, small loss, and made it back on Netflix. Not very active trading for me. I've got internet issues that I'm dealing with. They scheduled the technician wrong, just getting back from traveling, settling back in, so not forcing many trades. And I look forward to a nice, healthy, live streaming internet. All right, do good things. I appreciate you watching, and we will see you tomorrow. For this chapter of Adventure Time, we're going to Capitol Reef National Park, and then we're going to Calf Creek Falls, still making our way through Utah. And Capitol Reef is a cool one. It's similar in terms of landscape to other areas, but a little bit more ma ma majestic, magnificent, big rocks, some caves to nap in. And it's cool because they have... A, an orchard inside the national park that they maintain and some nice land and some farming in the middle of a national park sounds like a pretty good deal to me. This looks like the gates of Mordor, just huge rock masses with roads passing in between them. Nice little natural tunnel, or I should say a natural bridge over here. Long stretches of open road, cool colored. I love how you can see, like I said in another video, pretty much just time where the different shades of rock aging over time as it builds up on itself. And the road back. And this is one of the farms areas. And again, you wouldn't think Utah would have some nice lush green grass, but definitely a healthy farm. And you can buy the produce from the orchards while you're in the national park. Pretty cool setup they've got going. Then I went to Calf Creek Falls, just a nice little hike. I think it's a state park. Let's see, the difference between national parks and state parks, obviously size and funding and amenities, and there's less to do most of the time, but they're nice little stops and there's more of them. So some states have a ton of state parks. They just have a little thing like this. You know, you can walk up and take a little swim and there's campsites and a campground and I loved, I would, would travel, even when I wasn't, you know, road tripping on a massive cross-country trip, I would, rather than stop at a hotel if I'm driving, you know, 10 hours, I'd break up that drive by just camping in state parks along the way. You know, you can camp for 10 bucks as opposed to getting an $80 hotel room. This was some more petroglyphs on the side of a canyon here, and there was no sign. This The trail to see this is, you know, 100 to 200 yards away. And there's no sign that said, don't leave the trail. So I left the trail and meandered my way up close. I had to cross a, a river and 
take all my clothes off and carry them over my head because it was up to my chest. That was a fun experience, a little midday adventure and climbed up the rock and got real close to see the details of this painting. And we'll end it off with what I aptly named Blank Rock, and I'll let you all come up with your own names in the YouTube comments. This is in Kodachrome State Park. Koda, I think that's how you say it. I had Paul Simon's song stuck in my head the whole time I was there. But there were a lot of interesting rock shapes, as you can see. So that's it. We'll continue making our way through Utah. I believe we've got, forget the name of it, the next na Bryce Canyon National Park's coming up next. Hope you all had a good Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow.